They call it the medieval capital of Ireland, this city of castles and cathedrals and architectural treasures. And Rolf House is its crown jewel. Today, they flock to it from all over the world. 11,000 people walk through here in the past 12 months. Even more are expected this year. But 25 years ago, buildings like this were under threat in Kilkenny. Only a few people were about who cared, and those who did were members of the city's archaeological society. Roth House was then a derelict, tumble-down building, and going for a song by today's prices. With the help of a local butcher, they bought the place for £5,000. Well, we bought it at the bottom of the market, 1962. Property was very low at the time, and it wouldn't have had any value for anybody else, only us, because it was in a, a great state of disrepair. At 85, Margaret Phelan is the force behind the latest campaign to raise a quarter of a million pounds for the latest phase of restoration work. Money that will go into rebuilding and an indexing project. Good for tourism, but a difficult fundraising task in these times. Well, it really, it's always been a difficult problem to raise money, no matter what you want it for or when, because if you ever get involved in looking for funds off anybody, they'll say, well, this is not a good time. And that is true now as ever. But it has always been true since this house started, since the Kilkenny Archaeological Society started the mammoth task of restoring this entire complex of houses. They've succeeded in restoring very well two sets of houses, and now they're moving on to the third. It will be no more difficult or no less difficult than the previous ones, but their resilience, these ladies, and the people involved in the archaeological society generally, should not be underestimated. I'm sure they'll be equal to the task. The task is difficult, but it's a very well worthwhile one, because there's a lot of threads, if you will, running through it that are useful both from the general tourist range of facilities in Kilkenny and the specific family interest that this house represents. Right, now where is the money going to? That money will go into the third house, what's known as the new building, even though it dates back to 1610. And it will be used to, first of all, rebuild it, because effectively it's just a ruin now, and secondly, equip it as the genealogical centre for the county of Kilkenny. Of course, that genealogical work is going on here right now. Yes, it is. In another room to us now, we have a group of people working away, indexing the parish records, which is probably the most valuable and for certainly the start point for any county genealogical repository. Some of the registers are very old. They go back to um, the end of the 18th century. And uh, the writing is very faint on some of them. The ink has faded a lot. And the quality of the writing, some of it is, is the, the spelling is very, can be very bad. Um, As if different people made different entries at different times. That's, the that's right, yes. And uh, the dates don't, the, the dates don't always follow on in chronological order. Um, apart from that, we're um, coping with it. We're getting more expert as time goes on. Now, you've got how many people? Five, six, six employed full-time? Yes, full-time, yeah. yes, for, for 12 months. Mm -hmm. When they finish uh, at, at 12 months, you're going to be taking more people, I take it, or? Well, we have to wait and see if we'll, if we'll uh, qualify for another grant. But you have been. plenty of work to do. We have years of work to do. And when these would be done, we have all these old um, newspapers and a lot of, there's a lot of work to do. Uh, how will a house fit into the general perspective of old buildings in mm. Kilkenny? How will this house fit into it? Well, from a tourist board point of view, the Kilkenny market it markets itself as the medieval capital of Ireland. It's got, of course, Kilkenny Castle, the design workshops, our own headquarters is in She Arms House. Uh, it's got here the Roth House. It's got Kettler's Inn and 
many cathedrals and churches and so on, all of them together help us to be truthful when we speak about Kilkenny being the medieval capital of Ireland. Well, you had 11,000 people through this very building last year, and obviously you're hoping it'll be higher. But do you charge anything? Yes, there is a charge made here, a 75 pence for an adult and a smaller sum for children and for groups too as well. But there's quite a throughput of people here. But Roth House should not be seen as a thing apart, but within the overall context of the medieval capital. were merchants in the days when Kilkenny was the parliamentary centre of Ireland. We call it Roth, and here in Kilkenny it's called Root nearly always, and it was spelt R-O-T-H, R-O-T-H-E, and R-O-O-T-H. What were its origins? Well, they came, the family, we believe, came from the lowlands, the Netherlands, into the north of England, and with a great many other of the merchants of Kilkenny came into us about 1350 or so. And then, then they occupied every possible position of church and state. But they threw their lot in with the people. And um, therefore, they've always been dear to us. And of course, they espoused the patriotic cause against Cromwell. It was not easy to convince people that Kilkenny's ancient past was worth caring for. Nor has the struggle been entirely successful. Despite a public outcry in recent months, two of the city's principal banks were accused of defacing its fine cut stone to insert their masterpieces of technology, money machines. Mrs. Peelan has been honored for her energetic work with a room named after her. Yet at 85, when most people might shrink from the thought of it, Margaret Peelan remains undaunted at the prospect of holding out her hand for a quarter of a million pounds. Maybe it's not more daunting than it was to us in 1962 to buy the house here and, uh, and to buy the whole property and to restore this front house in 1966 cost us 14,000. Then we got the second house and, uh, to, uh, we, and to restore parts of it and uh, link it up with this first house cost us 110,000. So you can see how prices between 1962 and 1980 rose. And so, but anyway, I probably won't be here to see the finish of it, but I would like certainly to be here to see it begun.